Welcome back. Today's Thursday and that means acting analysis for animators. And today we're going to talk about Chernobyl episode four and the next week episode five. And then that's it. Lots of different things today. So why waste time? Let's go straight into it. First up, we have that short little shot of those three soldiers, actually two soldiers, and he is not a soldier, as he says. And it's all about contrast. I'm jumbling around in terms of the timeline. This is more towards the end of the episode. But what I want to take a look at is, let's go here. Look at that. He holds the gun like this. He holds it like that. He has it over his shoulder. So in whatever, if you have one or two, I mean, not one character, but if you have two characters, you want to think about contrast. They have to be somewhat different. And if you have three, again, think about the different poses, the different ways of holding things. All of that can be just a visual interest. It can be a character difference in how they behave, what they feel. Maybe he's really into this mission. Maybe he doesn't care. Maybe he's really angry about it. So whatever you can do, contrast is key. Unless, unless you want it to be one, two, three, or more, and it's all repetitive. There's always a reason for this. So if I want to switch to something else here, so if you're going to be repetitive, you have cubicles, right? It's all the same. It makes it monotone, it makes it boring, it makes it almost oppressive. You're in this little cubicle and your life is just duplicated and it's, and it's cloned and you have no, there's no contrast, you have no individuality, no purpose. And if you want to put this into a movie, you can think in terms of The Incredibles, where you have the cubicles and cubicles and cubicles, but then you can think in terms of contrast again, because you have all the cubicles, this pillar is going to stand out and his head is going to stand out. So if you look at this, that him being so big and this pillar here, this is different than all of the other cubicles. So you can use something that's repetitive as a contrast point to your character or your scene or an emotion, whatever it is, even in here, when it's all repetitive, all lined up, that head peeking out is an interesting difference, the interesting break into the repetitive lines of this composition. Now, continuing on with this, this is a classic stand-up assignment with variations. So as always, if you watch this channel, I like to look at scenes and kind of analyze them and see, well, how could you use this in your shot? You may be at school, you have an assignment, or you have a shot for your demo reel. So technically, he's sitting and he's getting up. That and that. That's a good body mechanics assignment for everybody to learn. It's very important. Now, how can you add more to this? Well, you can have that. That tells us he's either extremely sad or tired or frustrated or just, there's so many things you can read into this. So now you have this overlying emotion, this emotional state that drives the rest of it. So he's waiting potentially for some news. Now you have the look first. Then you have also detailed stuff if your character has props or, or clothing, how he pulls that, all that stuff. And on top of that, there is a wall. So I'm always a big fan of sets. So to add contrast and variation and asymmetry in your posing, this helps. So he puts his hand on here and then leans on it to pick up the phone. That again changes the whole posing and it can add interest and contrast to your posing as well. So if you think about an assignment, a oh, stand up assignment is boring. Well, think about this. You can do it like that. You can add something to your character. So it's not just body mechanics and you can add more things like props to add more variation and interest. Now, going back to this sequence here, and this is a bit tricky to implement into one shot, but I do want to point it out where the contrast in behavior and movement of a character. So he's there for the first time watching how uh, the characters are shooting at dogs. It's a very sad uh, assignment that they have. So as they are pros, he's kind of watching somewhat in horror or just not used to this. And you can see the flinch right there as they shoot, bam. So as it continues, you can see it's kind of the somewhat of a not super confident walk. And then he sees his first target. It's very sad. He has to, they have to shoot the dogs with their, their radioactive. So you can see the kind of a hesitant walk. He doesn't really want to do it. And he ends up just kind of wounding the dog. He's not doing a good job in not making it suffer. Contrasting to this, right? So now he's done this for a couple of times. The walk is much more confident. He sees the dog, shoots it. There's a, there's a very clear, strong stance. He's not shaking. He's not wavering. He realized he didn't do a good job. Reloads without checking, goes up and shoots. It's a horrible sequence, but I just wanted to point it out in terms of 
if you have characters and you potentially have more time to show change, think about posing, how the character stands, how much the movement is changing, the, the, you know, the control of a prop, and all that stuff can help you in kind of showing the change of a character. And now to something totally different, it's a camera move, but I'm not gonna talk about camera, that's a whole different FNA. I wanna talk about just this move and how we are framing the characters. And it's not exactly what I wanna talk about, but I wanna use this as a springboard. So if you have a shot like this, your camera is on rails or on a track and goes right to left, you can show off, I mean, imagine the grass wouldn't be as high. You can show off, this may, character, yay! You can show off full body mechanics. And it could be something that's more broad. It's further away, bigger silhouettes. And as the pan continues, you can see here, imagine there's less grass. You would have at least half of the character there and you can start incorporating more facial features. It's still body mechanics driven or in terms of you know, seeing more bigger, broader uh, body actions. And you can end in something where we are very close. Now imagine this character doesn't have a hat and all that stuff, but you can end up with something where it's a full on facial performance. And I think that could be an interesting change throughout the shot to go from wide to mid to close up and you can show up different skills in one shot. Speaking of off screen, I like this one. She calls someone in and waits and then as a character comes in here, this could be an interesting introduction. I and mean, you have kind of a contrasting thing of, again, close up where you wanna show someone waiting or looking at someone or judging someone, whatever it is. But I do like as this character comes in, all we see, it's almost Tom and Jerry style, we just see the legs. We only see this, right as she's waiting here, we only see hands handling this. Now, of course, you can have a different prop. It could be very aggressive stance. It could be very nervous, whatever you want to do. But it's interesting to do a shot where you only see the body. And again, you can have a walk in or walk out or however that character is handling a prop or no prop. But I think that could be an interesting composition, an interesting way to show off. I can do this and it's in contrast to this. And those two elements can play off of each other. Now, speaking of prop, he is done with this. And this is just one of those many examples I want to show. If your character has a prop, how do you handle this? What kind of push off? Would it just be pushing from here to here? So she has to make the extra step. This could be something very arrogant where he doesn't respect her and makes her do all the job, like all the work of getting there. But you can argue maybe this is a bit more polite. Well, I'm going to get this to you as far as I can, um, but maybe you can interpret this this, uh, this last thing up as a bit more of a dismissive, which I mean, in this case he is, like here, take this and now get out of here. But it's just an interesting way of showing this, and of course, composition in terms of the power status, and looking down, and all that good stuff you wanna kinda look into, into the shot, if it's true or not. But I do like this moment of the prop push off and the way he does it. And as always, if you're handling a prop, but if, even if not, if you just have an arm movement, Think about what the movement is and how we are going to interpret this as an audience. This is a bit more random, not something you can use for your shop, but I just didn't want to mention it because as I was going through this episode, they linger on this and this is the sound, it's radioactive and it's almost, oh, this is all death and decay. And then as you go forward to this one, he puts this out and again, we linger on this and this is also causing cancer, death and decay, There's some parallels. I don't know if I'm right, but I just wanted to mention it just quickly. It's just interesting. I just love the show. And I want to end with some non-verbal answers and acting and gestures and looks. It's mostly a look here and a facial thing. So as he listens, it's actually not, not on him, but he listens as this character is talking about their first kill. So he's gonna ask him, do you remember your first kill? And I love this character, just he has a great face, but look at his answer here, look at the eyebrows. And boop, right there, that's all he does. When he does ask him, hey, you know, do you remember your first kill? He does some secondary action stuff where he kind of looks at, mm, I need to drink some more. And he just does this, I love that. It's just this as an answer. So when you add a second character, it doesn't have to be a lot of work. I mean, you might argue prop handling and constraints, that is a lot of work, so maybe you know, don't do this. But if you have a character asking someone something and there's no audio, you can still do something with that, right? Your character doesn't have to be off screen. You can have that second person, even that person is saying nothing in the, in the lip sync, in the audio piece, you can have something like this. And I love this, it's just very subtle. Well, I mean, subtle or not, I mean, it's, it's broad enough for eyebrows, but I love that as an answer. And then within the show, he actually doesn't talk a lot. And it's kind of, it's very in character, except towards the end, he starts talking and singing. 
There you go, that was it. We have one more to go for next week. I hope it was helpful to anybody who watched this. If you watched this till the very end, as always, thank you so much. I appreciate the time that you put in. And if you like this, you can hit a like. If you have comments, complaints, concerns, bribes, comments are open. If you feel like this could be helpful to your shots, you wanna work with me on your shots, I do have workshops, signups are open link in the description. And if you want to know more about my channel, subscribe, hit that bell button to get all the notifications because I do upload every day except weekends. And that is it for me. I will see you tomorrow and next week. <laughs>